This video is sponsored by Autodesk and I'm going to show you how to create a topography inside of Revit 2024. Now you may be wondering, Kyle, you've already covered how to do topography in your intermediate course, which is true, but since the release of Revit 2024, a few things have changed. In fact, pretty much topography has completely changed, but it's still quite simple. So in this video, I'm going to show you what some of the differences are between 2024 and some of the previous versions of Revit. And also, if you haven't used any previous versions of Revit in general, how to use the Topo Solids massing and site tools to be able to create a topography. So there's a few things that have changed with topography inside of Revit. The first thing is that there is no longer Topo surfaces. Instead, these have been replaced with Topo solids. Additionally, the building pad tool has been removed, which I always found a little bit clunky anyway, so I think this is a really good update. Basically what it's done is consolidated both the building pad and the topo surface tool into one tool, which is topo solids. The topo solids tool works very similarly. I hate using that word, similarly, similarly. yeah, I can't say it. Topo Solids tool works much the same as the Topo Surface tool. If you've never used that tool in previous versions of Revit, basically what it allows you to do is create a topographical element defined by a number of specified points or through imported data from a third party CAD software. So essentially the first thing to do to start creating your topography is to go to generally a site plan because if you use a floor plan, sometimes the visibility and graphic settings won't show it. So if we go to a site plan, I'm going to create a a topography for this model. Now this model is quite well developed. If it looks a bit intimidating, don't worry about that. We're just going to use it as a base. Now to access the Topo Solids tool, we're going to go to the Massing and Site tab. From here, you're going to see that you've got the Model Site section, Topo Solids. Creates a solid topographical element. Now what it's saying is that you need to define the boundary of the element and specify the elevation points to create contours of the Topo Solid. So that's quite self-explanatory, but as you can see, it's got two options. You can either create from a sketch, which we're going to do first, or you can create from an import, which is what I was saying with a third party 3D modeling software, such as an AutoCAD file, you can import it in and use it as your topo solid. Quite often surveyors will do all of their surveys in CAD, which you can easily just import over into Revit, and then obviously you don't have to do anything with it. First of all, let's just create one from a sketch, which is going to create a basic topo solid, so you get the idea. We're going to create a boundary of the topo solid or the topography. Let's just create a rectangle that goes around around the site like this. Now, basically what we can do is just check the properties panel. You can see that this is placing the topo solid on finished floor level, which is just our zero datum. You can offset it from that level or whatever, just like creating a floor. I'm sure you're well aware of all of these things. Now, what I think is really cool that I don't think topo surfaces had in previous Revit versions is that you can actually change the structure of a topo solid to have multiple layers. Now, I can't actually remember if this was a feature in previous versions because I know that you could assign a material to a topo surface, although there was a lot of issues with topo surfaces not showing surface patterns and stuff like that, which we'll get into because that's now fixed. But also topo surfaces were just a single plane. You couldn't define a thickness. However, using topo solids, it's almost like the building pad and topo surface tool was combined. And now what you can do is assign a thickness to your topo surfaces, or in this case, your topo solid. We'll get into that a bit later as well. But for now, all that we need to know is that we've got our boundary defined and we can click the green tick. Cool beans. Another cool thing is that you can now attach walls to your topo solid, which you couldn't do with topo surfaces. There's a lot of cool improvements which we're going to find out along the way of this. Now I'm not going to attach any of them, that's fine. Here we can see we've got our topo solid. If we go to a 3D view, you'll be able to see that. Basically all it is is just a flat plane at the moment because we haven't defined any points with a height or elevation height. So that's going to be the next step. What we need to do is modify the sub elements. So what we can do is click that modify sub elements button and here you're going to see that it's got four points which can be changed and which specify the the heights and the contour of this topo solid. So with the modify sub elements button selected, we can then click any of these points and change the value of each specific point to have an elevation. So if we make this 400, what it's going to do is make that point 400 millimeters above the finished floor level, which is that level which this topo solid is constrained to. Now, as you can see with this point selected, there's also a couple of other options up the top here under modify sub elements. You can see that's the elevation there. So you can also change this here if you wanted to make it say 800. It's going to change it in both those locations. That's fine. 
But the elevation base, this is basically just saying the project base point is the base of this elevation point. So we've got this one as 800. Let's change that to 3000. And we're going to make this one over here 3000 also. Now what you can see instantly is that it's created a slope for this topo solid. So what it's saying is that this side here is 3000 millimeters above that finished floor level, which is where these two points are sitting on. And it's automatically created a number of contour lines along that path or along this topo solid. Now you can control these contour display options by going to the edit type menu. So under type properties, you can go to contour display, which is a new option now in 2024. And you can edit the contour display and you can choose how often you want these contours to show up. So for example, at the moment, it's got intervals of a thousand. If we made this 500, it would double how many contours there are. So I'm going to click OK and apply that. Now, as you can see, that hasn't changed anything because that was only changing the primary contours. But if we were to change the secondary contours, let's make this say 300 and apply that should give us a few more contour lines in between so that's just how you can change some of those things we're just going to keep it like that for now no worries we've got a couple of extra contour lines now what we could also do is add more points to this topo solid to give it a bit more detail so if i go to a site plan and you click on add point here what you could do now is say this elevation is 2000 what you can then do is start adding in your elevation lines and this is going to automatically create some contours now if we go to a 3d view what you're going to see is that there are all of our points that we just placed and if we get out of that it's then going to update that we've got a bit more detail in this contour model now if you find that this shape is no longer what you want you have the reset shape button which is going to bring it back to how it was without any of those point changes and undo that though so generally if you've got a survey from a surveyor or you've got site information which tells you all of the elevation points of a site all you need to do is specify your boundary of your topo solid and then and start adding your points and you just specify the elevation of each point as it is on your survey drawings and you'll be able to create your topo solid so with this whole topo solid upgrade you no longer have the split surface or merge surface tools so sub regions are gone in this version if you never use them don't worry about it basically instead what you've got now is that you can split the topo solid using the cut geometry in family tool or additionally you can also use the split element tool to cut it up so if i go to my site plan here's our topo solid so for example if we wanted to split this topo solid in half all we'd have to do is use the split element tool which my shortcut for that is sl otherwise you can find it up in the modified tab i'm just going to select the topo solid with that split element tool selected what we're going to do is use the split element tool we're going to create a line going halfway through this topo solid using that we can finish that edit mode and what it's going to do is split that topo solid in half which was extremely difficult to do before this makes it a lot easier he just wants to be on camera he's such a poser <laughs> let's just ignore the cute puppy you can also cut anything out of this topo solid using voids the other tool is the cut geometry and family tool which is under model in place if you model in something say like a generic model and you create a void extrusion let's say we had an extrusion that was coming through here make this 3000 tool so we know it cuts through the entire site we click ok what we can do is cut the topo solid on that extrusion and you're going to see that it's now created a void where that void extrusion is usually you wouldn't be able to cut a topo surface that easily you would have to use a building pad or the split surface i can't really remember what it was like back in the old versions but it was a big pain to try and cut up the topo solid so using those two tools makes it super easy just to chop it up now previously it used to be quite difficult to place things on a topo surface using topo solids it's it's now a lot easier it acts as a host for site components or railings floor based families so for example if i went to a site component and i wanted to place a tree whatever tree it may be you can now place it anywhere on that topo solid this is a bit funky doing it in a 3d view but it's going to use that as a host for the tree so there's no having to adjust this elevation in an elevation viewer section to try and figure that out it's going to do that for you which is pretty cool another cool thing is that you can apply slab based families onto a site topo solid so if you want to create curbing you could easily do that by um, choosing your topo solid and then adding a slab edge to it can i help you <laughs> 
Okay, we're having a little a little break. You can have a break too. I know learning about all this can be very difficult and very frustrating. Take a deep breath, give your dog or a cat or whoever may be nearby a cuddle. We'll get back to it in a moment. <laughs> You're such a poser. Why do you always have to be in front of the camera? Are you gonna let me finish this video? Ah! <laughs> now another method for creating topo solids is to create one from an import. So if we create a topo solid from import, we can create one from a CAD file or from a CSV. This is generally going to be something that a surveyor will give you. They'll give you a CAD file with all the survey information on it and you can turn that into a topo solid. Otherwise you can use one of my previously shared methods of using Google SketchUp and their 3D information to create a rough site topo solid for your model. Now I used to use this all the time in architecture school and for work as well. For work it was a little bit harder because you usually needed a trusted site to be able to model up your building and have it built in real life. But for uni it was great that you be able to just grab some rough site information and you can model your building around that because you're not going to go get a site surveyed for a uni project and it's very difficult usually to find that information. Check out my previous video on that if you're interested in learning about how to quickly create a topo solid in Revit in like under a minute. In my intermediate course, it also covers how to easily create and import topo solids from other software such as Rhino. That information is all still valid. I just really wanted to cover what some of these changes are and help you get on the road to creating your own topo solid inside of Revit 2024. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much to Autodesk for sponsoring it and I'll see you in the next one.